Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We got another weekly haul and review video for you guys coming around. Um, this is going to be a busy week for the channel. We've got today's weekly haul and review. Over the weekend, we are going to have a monthly haul where we just kind of go over everything that we got this month. If you've watched the weekly reviews pretty religiously, you're probably not going to need to watch the monthly haul. Um, you're not going to see really anything new, though we're just going to go title by title by title and kind of roll through them. Um, what you will want to stick around for, though, is I believe on Monday we're going to be dropping a monthly calendar um, check-in. We're going to take a look at the month of September. We're going to note any important 4K discs that are coming out in September, have a little bit of a brief conversation about those, and give you all the details you're going to need uh, so that you can pick them up if you want them. That is coming Sunday. But again, I want to thank you guys for watching. I really, really appreciate the support that we've been getting on the channel. If you like my content, please feel free to subscribe and ding the notification bell so you know that when new releases are coming. Two notes before we begin today. One, there's a terrible storm outside. So if you hear some thunder or I automatically lose power and go dark, you're going to know why. And two, yes, I'm wearing a hat. I feel like I don't need to explain that. I'm wearing a hat. I felt like it. Deal with it. Anyways, let's get right into the haul this week. So we got several titles, and the majority of these, I'm going to say four of these, were actually pre-orders. So what I love about weeks like this, months in advance, you know, we pre-order this stuff, and we get really, really, really excited about it, and then when it comes, I get to be very joyful and gleeful. And that's what happened this week. Four pre-orders, and then we got two additional items that we picked up to fill out the collection because they were on sale that's what we do we bargain hunt and we look for things on sale um, i'm gonna start tweeting more and if i find a sale i'm gonna start tweeting it so that you guys can pick up some of these too because honestly if you keep your eye out you're gonna find titles really at a great price just about every day that being said let's get into it so i'm gonna kick us off with uh, a title from scream factory and scream factory you know they, they they do good work they do really really good work on horror restorations we got two scream factory items this week um the first though is the sixth volume in something that i'm very appreciative of scream factory myself for doing that is the universal horror collection so you know i'm gonna say this a lot of these universal horror films they don't get a lot of love outside of the universal monsters i mean we all know the wolfman we all know dracula we all know the creature from the black lagoon and frankenstein we all know those we all love those films those films have gotten different releases at times but there's a lot of these forgotten horror films that are in universal's catalog that don't have necessarily the universal monsters in them and what i'm very grateful for is that scream factory is going back into the, the back catalog of universal pulling out these old horror films boxing them up in a collection and releasing them for your viewing pleasure and i have to say I'm very grateful for them for that. So this is the only one that I have right now, the sixth volume, but I'm going to go back and buy the other volumes. You'll probably see them filter into reviews as, as we move forward, reviews and hauls. You're going to see these filter in. This is the sixth one. It came out this week. And on this collection, you have The Black Castle. That's from 1952. You have Cult of Cobra. That Cult of the Cobra, that's from 1955. The Thing That Couldn't Die, that is from 1958. And The Shadow of the Cat, that is from 1961. All of these have new 2K scans of each title. Uh, it looks like they all were scanned from a, a, a film element of these particular titles. So I'm very excited to go in. Each of them have new commentary tracks. There's a lot here to get into. It's very exciting stuff. There's a little booklet that comes in here as well, which gives you a little bit of information about each film. There's, there's the little booklet. So that's pretty cool. There's some pages in here. I'll show you a couple. So like here's one for the thing that couldn't die. Just some stills and a little bit of information down here in the bottom corner for you if you're a film historian and you like that kind of stuff. Anyways, this Universal Horror Collection, we're going to do a review of it, but it's going to be independent of our weekly reviews. There's four films here to review. That's going to take me a little bit of time, and I want to I wanna devote the amount of time appropriate to get you a good review of all four of these these titles and the item the collection itself so the universal horror collection scream factory our second scream factory item is uh you know i loved this series when i was a kid and uh you know i knew they made a film of it to, to, uh, just like the twilight zone right you had the twilight zone show and you had the twilight zone film some people liked the film some people hated the film everybody loves the show very similar situation here tales from the dark side a little bit more of i don't want to say goofy i don't i want to say more of an 80s version of the the twilight zone it was an anthology series kind of like tales from the crypt 
in a way. It told different horror stories, and then they also, because of the success of the show, they gave it a full-length feature film, Tales from the Dark Side. So I believe this compiles four stories, and, and honestly, this was these stories were written by George A. Romero, um, one was taken from Arthur, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Stephen King. They all kind of collaborated to, to put this set together and release this anthology film. This is really how scary stories uh, to tell in the dark should have been done. It should have been done as an anthology film. Tales from the Dark by Scream Factory. So as you know, usual, and I'll go ahead and take the disc out just to show you guys. But as usual, you know, you get the flip cover. So you got this one on the outside. And on the inside, you get kind of the original artwork. I like that Scream Factory does this just because you can decide how you want to display this on your shelf. It's really up to you. Do you want to use the new artwork or do you want to use the old school, uh, you know, artwork from the original release of the film? That's up to you. There's a few special features on here. Um, I'm not quite sure what all's on here, but there is a commentary track. That's pretty cool. Over at the digitalbits.com, uh, apparently... They have some insight into that because uh, they, one of their writers was in the room when the, um, the audio track was done for this. So that's pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm excited to dive into this. This one will be a review for next week's haul video, Tales from the Dark Side. Now that we've gotten the Scream Factory releases out of the way, I'm going to dive into two releases from Blue Underground. These are 4K titles. Now listen, here's a little history on this. Uh, Blue Underground, a few years back, I think it was a few years at this point, they released both Zombie and Maniac on 4K UHD discs. It was their first foray into 4K. I bought both of them. They both are phenomenal transfers. The vi they, they look great. They sound great. They both have Atmos tracks. They were phenomenal restorations with great, some great amount of special features. So when I found out that Blue Underground was releasing two more 4K films, these were no-brainers. These could have been any movies and I probably would have picked them up because again, Blue Underground did such a good job on that on those first 4K films. How could I not buy these additional two? And there's a third that's been promised. Daughter of Darkness is coming later this year. I'm excited about that, Daughters of Darkness. Uh, but let's get into what we picked up this week. So first, both of these are Fulci films. So that's another thing to note. Both of these are Fulci films. If you like Fulci films, I don't know how I'm not going to recommend these. These are probably going to be solid 9 out of 10s. But we're going to start with the New York Ripper 4K UHD. Um, this is, you know, a pretty... This is one of the... Uh, uh, more gruesome films. This was taken a four. This was scanned in 4K uh, from a, the original 35 millimeter uh, negative, and it's got Dolby Vision, Vision HR and Dolby Atmos track. This is probably going to be phenomenal. I love Fulci. I love Fulci. I really, really do. Um, I'm just a huge fan, and this is probably going to be a really, really good transfer of this film. If we look inside, you get both the 4K disc, and then you get a special feature Blu-ray disc. This is probably the same special feature disc from the uh, three disc Blu-ray set that they released to this film. So New York Ripper on 4K, this will also definitely be in next week's review. Following it up with another Fulci Blue Underground 4K title, we got The House by the Cemetery in 4K. Very similar to the last one, right? This is a new 4K transfer from the 35 millimeter film. Um, it's got Adobe Vision HDR and Adobe Atmos track. This is... Um, this is, you know, I'm very excited to get into this. I'm very excited to watch this. Just like the other one, when we look inside, you're gonna see you got the 4K disc, and then you also got the special feature Blu-ray disc. I believe this is the special feature disc that is from the uh, box set release, three disc box set release that Blue Underground did for Blu-ray. So this is House by the Cemetery, and this also will be on next week's review, guaranteed. Finally, we're going to finish out the week with two supplemental titles that we just picked up. These were titles that we wanted to fill our collection with because, uh, you know, anytime I find something on sale, I like to buy it and then add it to my collection. So the first one we got is Shin Godzilla. Picked this up for $5 on Amazon.com. I don't know if this is a good Godzilla movie or a bad one. I think I remember hearing good things about this, actually. Um, but this is a Funimation release. I think this is a retread of Godzilla. I think this is them kind of trying to reboot the series in Japan. And um, I'm pretty excited to give this one a look. It's going to have a lot of CGI, it looks like, just on the back. So I'm very curious how that'll look. Um, it's got both an H Dolby True HD Japanese track and an English track. So you don't have to listen to it in Japanese if you don't want to. It's got both tracks on it. Inside, we did have a special uh, uh, digital copy. I haven't tried to see if that works, but you do get the Blu-ray and the DVD of this film. I want to say this was released a little while ago, maybe 2016, something something like that. I know this is an older 
release, but I found it for $5 on Amazon. Really hard to turn down. Love Godzilla movies. Um, I am a big fan of, of these Japanese films, these, these types of films. Um, so anyways, Shin Godzilla, this will also be on next week's reviews. And finally, the last supplemental uh, item that we picked up, and I'm actually really excited about this. I saw this on sale on Amazon. Um, again, Blu-ray.com is a great, check that daily, man, because they're going to have great deals for you at the top of that webpage, and you'll see what's on sale over at Amazon. And you can filter it down if you're a member to what's on sale at Best Buy too, and just keep your eye on things because prices fluctuate. But anyways, we picked up the Batman 4 film collection. This is 89 through 97. These are the four kind of classic Batman films. Um, from that era where you have the Tim Burton 1989 Batman with Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Uh, this is the first fun fact about this. This is the first movie that I actually saw in the movie theater. 1989 Batman. Um, I was a huge fan of this when I was a kid. I think Nicholson killed it as Joker. Michael Keaton is the Batman in my mind. Um, this is a great, great uh, movie and I can't wait to watch it in 4k inside you get both the 4k and the blu-ray version of the film there were digital codes for all of these it's important to note there's a few special features on here um, I'm kind of excited to dig into these but I, I again I like this series of movies after that you got Batman Returns also Tim Burton this was another great film saw this one in the movie theater too you got Danny DeVito as the penguin you got Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman uh, this is a fun release um, a little darker. I, you know what? I would say a little, a little, dar a little darker, but a little more on the Burton side. This feels like a Burton film. The first one does, but not as much as this one. This one is heavy on the Burton. Um, in this, you got Blu-ray and 4K. You're going to see this in every single one of these that I show you. Um, follow that up with the less exciting Batman Forever. Uh, with the Riddler, played by Jim Carrey, and Tommy Lee Jones as, as Two-Face. Um, and this one is, you got Nicole Kidman in it. You got Val Kilmer in it. This is, this is Joel Schumacher, I believe. Um, yes, it is. And this one, you got Blu-ray and 4K. And I do like that the discs have kind of the colors. It does make it easy to remember. I don't know why colors are associated with this so much, but they are. Um, this is when things get a little worse in this series of movies. And then finally, to top it off, you got the worst of all of them. And that's Batman and Robin with Arnold Schwarzenegger as... Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy played by Uma Thurman. You got Alicia Silverstone popping out as Batwoman um, and, and Chris O'Donnell as Robin. And this is meh, you know, meh. I could have said Chris O'Donnell in the last one too. I forgot he was even in it, but this is really bad. This is the nipples on the bat suit. George Clooney as Batman movie. This one's kind of infamous for how bad it really is. Red discs on this one, pretty cool stuff. This one was also Joel Schumacher, so there's that. Kind of killed Batman at the time, you know, but it is what it is. That's our pickups for the week. Let's go ahead and pivot our... Let me know what you think in the comments, actually, of this this haul. You know, was this a good haul? Did we do good this week? I think we did. I think we're going to have a lot of great reviews for you guys next week out of some of this content. Let me know what you think. We're going to pivot right over to the review. Hey, guys, for the review portion, we moved rooms in the house. It's just because it was getting a little loud in that room, and... I don't want too much of the noise to get in the way. So I'm sorry if the audio is a bit weird here. I'm sorry if the my kitchen is not appealing to you and I did lose the hat. Um, actually, I don't know where the where did I put the hat? I don't even know when I took the hat off. But anyways, we moved locations. We came to this living room here. We're going to get into the reviews. We've got some good stuff to review for you guys this time around. Um, so let's get into it without further ado. So the way we're going to do this this time is I'm going to save the best for last. I'm going to save what I would consider my champion of the of the week last week. That's going to be the last thing that I review. The first thing I'm going to review for you guys this week is Candyman. This is the Scream Factory Collector's Edition. I got this on Amazon for a really good price, so it did not come with the uh, uh, slipcover, but it did come with two discs, and it did come with the reversible cover there, and it came with a ton of special features. I showed this last time. I'll try and show it again. I'm getting a pretty heavy glare, but anyways, two different cuts of the movie. You get the theatrical cut. You get the unrated cut. I did give both cuts... Um, of viewing and I have a little bit of notes on that as well as the special features that are on both cuts I actually do think one is better than the other but probably not for the reason that you think So let's get into it here. So Candyman is kind of one of those movies where I have I had really fond memories of it going in I rewatch it today and I don't know if it's because of 2020 and what's going on in the world But it definitely resonates a lot more today than it, it did when I originally watched it I know Rodney King was happening at the time that this originally came out it resonated with audiences then for that reason um, 
it resonates now for a completely different reason that I will not go into uh, due to this is not a political channel. But what I will say about Tony Todd as the titular victim Candyman is that he... <laughs> You don't want to, like, it's kind of a weird thing, right? Because you don't want to say, well, all of the killers in these movies, you know, they might look a certain way or act a certain way because it's not like that's who you want representing your culture. But I will say Tony Todd does a good job of playing Candyman, who does have a bit more of a, an African-American culture to his background. Uh, Candyman is a slave who had a an affair um, with... A, a white woman and at the time you know because he was a slave he was punished for that very very aggressively and because of that he is what he is now um the this movie has a lot of hidden meaning to it from its surface you would just see it's a slasher film Candyman. you say his name five times he comes out and he kills you he gets really really fascinated with the main protagonist in this film helen and um he wants kind of her to be his wife to be to be with him um to be part of the fable with him but you, you you find out a little more in the story there and i will say the story itself is kind of interesting uh these these kids from the inner city from cabrini green which is projects in chicago they look up the candy man in a weird way but they don't because they kill him at the end so there's a bit of a confusion there in the storyline and maybe i'm just dumb but while i will agree that the mythos is interesting and it's it's kind of interesting that they bring in african american culture into this a little bit and they bring in some of the struggles that african american communities may have faced at the time particularly in cities like chicago may probably face still today in chicago in all honesty in bigger cities like that it's kind of interesting to me that they they it's good that they bring that in because it does kind of I don't want to say it gives African Americans a horror film that they can relate a little more to, but it kind of does. But at the same time, it deals with things like gentrification and the positives and negatives of that. It deals with, um, you know, the way that we view black people in all honesty. Um, so there's a lot of like hidden meaning there. Take that for what you want to. I'm not going to say that's a positive or a negative in a lot of ways. Uh, some of that because you may view that as a negative and, and uh, not because you're racist, just because you do think maybe there's a little bit of divisiveness uh, in this story. I don't know. I don't know. Look, I don't know. I'm not saying that's my opinion, um, but I could see how some people would say that. So listen, here, here's the thing. The two cuts on this film, the theatrical version, in my opinion, looked better than the unrated version. Now, they're the same time. When you look at them, they're the same runtime, and you might think, how is that? And that's because they cut out a lot of some of the end credits and stuff like that to make the, the run times the same. But I just think there are some scenes that were added to the unrated cut that don't seem like they were 1080p. They get really blurry, they get kind of hard to look at. They're just, you can you can tell the difference between the clarity right away. Like instantly when you go to one of these scenes, you you know it because there's just a huge difference in, in clarity and detail and all that good nature from the, the theatrical version. Um, both say that they got 2K restorations um, from 4K scans of the films, but I just, again, in my opinion, the theatrical version looked better. And I'm not even gonna say the theatrical version looked perfect. Um, there was some blur. I think it was good. I think the video was good. But it's one of those where it varies, and that could just be the nature of the film, the way it was filmed, all of that that good stuff, right? That's going to affect the way this looks. But there's a little bit of blur. There's not. You lose some detail in some scenes. You gain some detail in others. It's just a real hodgepodge of, of quality and variety in that. And I don't know. You know, I like more of a streamlined uh, consistency in my, in my presentation, even if it's not great i want that to be consistent throughout um virginia madsen the acting in this movie is good i think tony todd is excellent as candy man he's excellent 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 virginia madsen though she's kind of wooden she's very pretty but she's kind of wooden she doesn't she it doesn't hurt the film it's just her reactions to things are really weird and then they explain it in the special features like, oh, we hypnotized her for the role because we, we didn't think that people should react that way. And I'm thinking, yeah, but people do react that way. Regardless of what you think, if somebody runs at you, you do scream sometimes. That's a normal reaction. That's a reaction that audience members associate with people in peril. She almost seems willing in this, in a lot of the scenes. And they said in the special features that that's, that's kind of how it was. He, he hypnotizes her. But I don't know. It just felt weird to me rewatching it, right? And I don't think it was necessarily her fault. I think it's just bad direction. I'm gonna say it, I think it was kind of a poor choice from the director. It does create kind of a stylistic nature to it. It makes it a little different than other horror films, but people are people are like familiar with a certain style and a reaction. When you don't give them that, they get a little confused. You had a good track here, DTS 5.1 audio. I don't think it was egregious. Your surrounds, they're not gonna be very heavy, heavily used here. 
okay? But the track, the, the audio, the, the musical track, which is phenomenal, the score on this is phenomenal, really does utilize all of those those channels. And you get, there's a 2.0 track too, and I'm not gonna say that's even bad. I think that's a good track too. I did flip back and forth for the, the for this review. Um, you know, but, but again, the audio is good. It's not bad. Your surrounds might not be used a lot, but it's not bad. Overall, I'm going to say Candyman was an 8 out of 10. The special features here, there's a ton, ton, ton of them. So if you like featurettes and you like commentaries and all that good stuff, you know, Scream Factory tends to deliver on that. So you don't have to, you don't have to worry about that. There's tons of special features. That, it gets an 8 out of 10, right? It's a highly recommended film. If you're a Candyman fan, this is the best version of the film you're going to get right now. I know they're remaking it. I know uh, we're going to get another one, but this one right here, I would say this is a highly recommended pickup. Now we're going to get into what was su really surprisingly good, was Ad Astra. Now, I'd heard nothing about this movie prior to picking it up. I knew it existed, but I hadn't heard, like, was this good? Was this bad? Is this something I should pick up? No one ever talked about it in, you know, my, my circles. No one ever mentioned this movie. I picked this up and I'm really glad that I did. This is a film that has a surprisingly complex narrative to it, right? Um, you know, it's really about letting go of your past. And it also kind of delves into humanity and how we discover things and how we, we will discover new places and then we'll turn them into what we're used to. So what's new about it anymore, right? And it kind of delves into a little bit of that. There's a very deep narrative here. You go through this story with Brad Pitt and he starts out as this like straight laced guy who can who can keep himself so calm that he maintains a um, his heart rate can stay below 80 even in the most stressful situations. And you kind of go on this journey with him as he unravels and he starts to question things and and he questions himself and his past and what he's doing, his mission. There, there's so much there and Brad Pitt nails it in this movie. This this is a great performance by Brad Pitt. I don't know if this won any awards or was discussed in any award conversation, but this was in this was incredible. I, Brad Pitt does an incredible job in this movie. So good. He takes you on the journey with him. Um, you know, this this felt very Kubrick. This felt very 2001: A Space Odyssey. You can you cannot escape that with the visuals in this movie. You, you can't escape feeling like 2001 A Space Odyssey had a heavy influence on this film. The coloration, the visuals, the, the way that space is viewed, the audio. You know, there's not a lot of sound in space. Every now and then you'll hear a sound, but it's only when it's right near the character that we're kind of with. Um, I thought that was an interesting take. Um, you know, the video was okay. Once again, I'll go into the, the kind of difference. You're probably okay picking up the Blu-ray. The HDR does help a ton with the coloration and the blacks. There's a lot of blacks in this film, a lot of grays and a lot of whites. And the HDR really, really helps with those blacks, grays, and whites. I'm sorry if you're getting a lot of glare off this. It's the lighting. Again, we have some bad storms right now, so I had to move to a different room. So I apologize for that. But listen, 35 millimeter film and digital was used. They mixed them together for this. It's not like The Incredible Hulk where you can really, really tell. Go back and watch that one if you wanna see a movie in 4K where you can really, really tell the digital portions of that film. Go back and watch that. Um, it's not egregious. They added some grain in. There is natural grain from the film, but they added grain into the digital version. But again, this looks really good and HDR really, really helps this 4K presentation. Features, you get a little bit. Um, you get a little bit of features, but it's, it is what it is, right? I, I tend to think on newer releases, they don't really hit us really heavy with the features, and that's a little disappointing. The audio here is superb. The audio is superb on this. It mostly utilizes your fronts, but it does utilize your surrounds every now and then, and you'll hear, like, as shots go by. You, you, you know, you don't hear them all the time because of the sound, but you do hear them. Your, your subwoofer is going to boom. You're going to feel it. The fronts and the subwoofer are going to push you. This is great, great audio. I believe this is an Atmos track that was on this. So yeah, of course, it's great audio. It's Atmos. You know I love Atmos. A few short featurettes, like I mentioned, nothing special. Ad Astra is going to get an 8.5 out of 10, a high recommendation, just like Handyman, but this one almost borders into a must own. This is a great film. If you like 2001 A Space Odyssey, give this one a try. I think this was what Interstellar was trying to be. And this just does a better job of nailing that. Ad Astra with Brad Pitt. 8.5 out of 10. Next up, we've got the Steelbook version of Casper. Um, again, I'll give my, my review of the actual Steelbook itself. It is not matte. It is this 
glossier type, so you're gonna get finger, you can probably see already the fingerprints on this uh, because of the glare of the light in front of me, but this this is very glary. It's, it's, I like the artwork, I think it's cool. You got the house on the back, and you got the Casper and the other ghosts here on the front. And then on the inside, I showed this when I did it, but you got Christina Ricci and Casper. I'm not gonna show it again, but look, so the packaging is fine. I mean, I don't, again, I don't like the glossy ones. I'm much more of a fan of the matte. But, you know, again, the artwork's cool, it's fine. As long as you're okay with fingerprints, you can see one right there. As long as you're okay with fingerprints, this is fine. The movie, I gotta tell you, man, this was funnier than I remember it being. This was so much fun. I had a good time watching this. Probably like, at first when I started watching I felt embarrassed that I was having such a good time watching this film. I was like, wait, should I be enjoying this as much as I am? Because this is a kid's movie. I probably shouldn't. But then I settled in and I was like, you know, to, hell, to heck with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a good time with this, and I did. There are tons of cameos in this. I don't know if I want to spoil them, but Dan Aykroyd makes a cameo. Rodney Dangerfield makes a cameo. Clint Eastwood makes a cameo. There's some really cool cameos in this, and uh, it was entertaining. There's enough um, adult humor in here. There's some childish bits and childish jokes, but there's enough adult humor in here that you're going to enjoy yourself if you watch this one with your kids. You just are. Um, last time I watched this was 25 years ago. So to think that this is that old, that A, makes me feel ancient, but B, you know, I have a different experience now as I'm an adult and I'm rewatching this. The story was, you know, pretty basic, right? Casper wants to be a human. He meets Christina Ricci, yada, yada, yada. I'll let you guess what happens. It's well told. It's not like egregious. And the CGI, honestly, is not that bad. I've seen modern movies where the CGI looks worse. I think the fact that they can be ghosts, so you can kind of fade them out and make them look like shadows a little bit, helps right you know because they don't have to be physical presence that are right there in front of you so it does help a little bit they do look cartoonish but they almost you kind of feel like they get away with that because this is casper the friendly ghost what do you expect right um in this i will say the video looked pretty poor the video was not great on this this blu-ray release i think this is the old old blu-ray release this is a retread of an old blu-ray and they just added in the special feature disc uh, here with this release for the, for the 25th anniversary. I do not think this is a new restoration of the film. I do not think this is a new cut of the film. And I just thought the video looked soft and muddy. And I didn't think it looked great at all. So that's my feedback on the video. That's If anything holds this back from being like a must own, it's gonna be the video. And it's just not fantastic. The audio, however, was solid. It's not like a 10 out of 10. It's not offensive though. It's not an offensive audio. I think it's a DTS 5.1. Yeah, DTS is master audio 5.1 track. Um, it's okay. It's not terrible, right? Not offensive. Um, I don't really have much to say about it, except for that it was an okay audio track. The extras, though, on this are spectacular. Now, they're DVD, and I hate DVD. But the amount of stuff that you get with this steelbook, that makes the features incredible. I can't complain when I get two additional feature films and a bunch of, uh, and some animated shorts. I'm not gonna complain about that. To me, that is, um... That's an incredible amount of features. I'm getting so much bonus content with this, um, and I'm not paying a lot of extra money for it. One final note, the acting was fine. It was a little over the top at times, but again, that plays into the cartoonish nature of the film. What I'm gonna give Casper, the Steelbook Edition, specifically because of all the features that come with it, I'm giving it an eight out of 10. The video was so lackluster that I have to ding it for that, but this is a very enjoyable kids film. It's one that you could go back and watch today. It doesn't feel dated, and, and you can enjoy this with your kids, and you will probably even have a laugh or two yourself. Eight, eight out of 10, highly recommended, Casper 25th Anniversary Edition Steelbook. Now, finally, the main event this week, as if there was any question as to what this was going to be. This is the Arrow Video 4K box set for Flash Gordon. This is the limited edition, special edition. I'll go into kind of some of the bonus content that comes with this, but I'm gonna tell you this by itself is a, is a must own. So what you get when you buy the special edition, and I'm gonna pull everything out here and just kind of do my best to show you. And I should probably turn my camera, but you get a full length poster. That's Flash Gordon, okay? It comes dual-sided, so you can hang it up however you want, if you want to hang it up. You also get a, I think it's 50, wow, it's 59 pages. You get a 59-page booklet inside that has all kinds of details about the film itself. Incredible. Um, these are basically essays, and this is just awesome that this comes with this. You also get the film itself, obviously. 
but you get stills from the movies presented on these cards. And then each of them on the back. Yeah. So these are kind of reversible and they're really, really cool. And yeah, this is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. And then finally you get a bonus disc and I don't know if this comes with the standard edition or not, but you do get a bonus disc, which is a Blu-ray of Life After Flash, which is the documentary, and we're gonna talk about that as we get into the actual film itself. So special features wise, you already know where I'm going. This is a 10 out of 10 special features. There's just no way it's not. You get so much with the limited edition package that I just could recommend it in and of itself. Now, let's talk about the film, Flash Gordon. So I think this is a stupid movie. I'll just, I'm gonna come out and say it. Some people love this movie. This is a cult classic. I'll probably get a thumbs down for even saying this, but I just think this is a really, really stupid, campy movie. Now, some background information on this. When they filmed this, this was originally intended to be a serious movie. You can even tell by the actors that some of them are playing this very serious. And then, because of 1960s Batman, which heavily influenced this, it took a direction of being very campy. Now, you can see that too, clearly, okay? Um, it's very, very camp. You can't watch this and not think 60s Batman. The two definitely have a resemblance to each other. I could talk about the importance of Flash Gordon as a whole. I mean, if you enjoy Star Wars, you have Flash Gordon to thank. I'm not saying this movie, but you have the comic strip Flash Gordon and the stories to thank for Star Wars. George Lucas tried to buy the rights to this. He wanted to tell this story. And because he couldn't get the rights to this, I think is why he ended up telling Star Wars. So Star Wars has a lot to, to thank Flash Gordon for, in all honesty. And Star Wars fans have a lot to thank Flash Gordon for. Now, did this change my opinion of the film? It did. It did big time, okay? I said it was a stupid film, but it's a fun film to watch, man. This was a new restoration. You could tell there was a lot of love done to this res restoration. There was a previous Blu-ray that was put out by Universal, I want to say, and it had a lot of noise reduction in it. They did a lot of post work for noise reduction. This does not do that. This has grain all over it, okay? They, they, there was a lot of care put into the re this restoration, so much so that they did have to remove some of the wire work because the resolution was so high that you could start to see the wire work. So they did have to go in and post and they did have to take out some of that wire work, but it doesn't hurt the picture at all here. You get a great, great picture, okay? There's a little bit of softness, a little bit, but I think that's just the way they filmed it. There's nothing they can do about that, man. The colors pop so much, you know? This film has a, um, a history of being uh, very red and green and gold and garish and a lot of those reds blend together in previous releases but the HDR helps so much here that you can see the difference between red and crimson and other versions you know other all kinds of differences there's so much detail in the suits that it almost makes the people look fake this is an incredible restoration incredible okay goofy film incredible restoration you got to give the video a 10 out of 10 Maybe a 9.5 out of 10, just because a little bit of softness, but still, the video is phenomenal. The audio here, you get both a 2.0 and a 5.1 True H True HD track. I want to say a DS DTS HD Master Audio 5.1. I did both again, and I'll say I stuck with the 2.0 because I just like the way it handled voices a little more. But both tracks are great. You're not going to go wrong with, with either track. 5.1 is going to utilize your surrounds. You're going to hear that Queen soundtrack. That Queen soundtrack. That is phenomenal. You're going to hear that Queen soundtrack on your surrounds. It's really going to play nicely. But the 2.0 isn't, isn't bad either. If you got the right setup, the 2.0 utilizes the sound and you don't lose a lot of the voices with the 2.0 either. So both soundtracks, you're not going wrong here. Um, this is such a fun, campy film, man. Go back and watch this because it's really, really worth it. And watch this version because it's such a phenomenal restoration. The limited edition, I told you, it comes with a full-length documentary, Life After Flash. That is an hour and a half of just kind of interesting facts about the movie, the actors in the movie, and some of the fans. And what's been influenced by Flash Gordon over the years. Um, it's interesting to, to take in a lot of information. You get a lot of good interviews and that special features well worth it. Look, this whole package in and of itself, this is a nine out of 10. This is a must own. You must own this. If you, if you like, think you like Flash Gordon, campy films, if you like 80s movies, I think this is from the 80s, you should pick this up. This is, this is a must own disc. The special features alone here, the care that Arrow puts into their releases, the, the Arrow is one of the top, top, top boutiques with Kino Lorber and, and Scream Factory, Shout Factory. Um, the, they're the top of the top. 
and they really show it off here. And I've heard Pitch Black is not any worse, and I'm really excited to get that title next week. Flash Gordon, 9 out of 10, my champion of the week, and a must-own set. Guys, that's what we got for the reviews with you guys this week. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, if you like, please like this video. Please comment below. Let me know what you think. What did you think of Flash Gordon? Are you a big Flash Gordon fan? Do you hate me now because I said it was a crappy movie at first? Whatever. I redeemed myself, right? Um, please go ahead and comment, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. We really appreciate you guys watching. I'll be back with you guys later this weekend with an additional video. We're going to be doing a monthly haul, which if you've kept up with these weekly hauls, you could probably skip that one. I'm not going to lie. And then we're also going to do a release calendar review for September with 4K releases. That's going to be one you don't want to miss. We're going to take a look at everything. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you guys next time.